Space News March 22, 2024. News and Birthdays English. Mari Swa. Hello again. Thank you for being here with me once more. I hope you are very well today. I am Mari. This information can be seen as science fiction or as the viewer sees best and I post it for entertainment purposes only. Still, I take my information very seriously, and for whoever has eyes to see. There has been a lot of talk over the internet and the media of unusual UAP, or unidentified aerial phenomena. I mean UFOs in general. They say there has been a massive spike in the number of sightings lately, so I had to look into this subject. Interestingly enough, space traffic from the Vieira indicates nothing unusual, and they know about every single spacecraft, human or not, aircraft, or ship at sea and their whereabouts. No spacecraft can even get close to Earth without being detected, monitored, and hailed. So the extra spike in UFO reports in the last three months must be for another reason, because the amount of non-human craft around Earth and also in atmospheric flight has officially not changed. So the reason may be that people are opening up to report their sightings and publishing them in the media. And or the government and their controlled media have also opted to filter out such sightings much less which could be an indicator of movement in the direction of preparing the population for a false alien invasion. And such invasion cannot occur because Earth is and has been under strict Federation control for a very long time now. It is their turf and their responsibility to take care of it. Or it can be seen in another harsher way, Earth is already invaded. So no, I cannot find any unusual space traffic to report. Everything is business as usual with Earth. But also take into account that although non-human spacecraft are very real and all over Earth, most of what you can find in the media is CGI rubbish and lies. Please use your discernment when watching such things. Moving on to the next related subject. There are no reports of any unusual meteor or asteroids which may be cause for concern for Earth. And even if there would be one, now or in the future, Rest assured the Galactic Federation has in its best interests to move it away and at a safe distance from the planet so it will not impact Earth. Take into account another thing. An asteroid moving close to Earth would endanger all the 950 or more kilometer long spacecraft parked around Earth. Even more so if it passes at the same distance from the Earth to the Moon or closer. Earth orbit, high and low, is a highly populated parking lot for spacecraft of countless star races all of which have something to do with the Galactic Federation and Earth, mostly to monitor their starseeds as their main activity. At all times, there are at least 950 spacecraft in Earth's orbit which exceed a kilometer long, and about 5,000 smaller craft, besides the innumerable service shuttles and transports moving to and from them all. And they are all moving, some leaving Earth's orbit while others are arriving. So there is a lot of activity, and I mean a lot of it. If you cannot notice all that activity from Earth easily, it is because of the contained system, mostly of lies, the Galactic Federation imposes on you to give the illusion of being alone in the universe. As someone else said, Earth's orbit looks a lot like a mall's parking lot on Earth any Saturday evening. And anyone with a decent enough telescope can see a lot of that activity, which is officially said to be because of other reasons like satellites and so on. A word about the Sun. There is nothing wrong with it, we must insist, so any solar flare warnings are nothing more than population control fearmongering. The same goes for solar eclipses, like the one about to happen and predicted great changes. There is nothing unusual going on, I must insist, and any great changes that may happen would be artificially created to match such astronomical events for ritualistic purposes and so on, so watch for false flags and similar events. Moving on to kinder things. As many of you know, there has been a series of birthday parties up here, starting with Killa on February 28th, then Athena Swaru and Durkalo on the 2nd of March, and finally with little Yaji Swaru on the 8th of March. As many of you know, Tegedans don't celebrate birthdays as such, not like on Earth, so this is obviously an adopted behavior. It is one of the nicest parties and reasons for celebration humans have on Earth and we love it. We try to make a nice party just as you would make it down there. We prepare nice food at the preference of the person being celebrated, and multiple cakes are baked here, mostly chocolate ones with a strawberry interior or fruit cakes, which everyone loves. 
And of course, we place birthday candles all over the cake so the birthday people can blow them off. No alcohol is ever consumed, as we know it is highly toxic for us and for everyone. And, of course, we shower them with presents as it should be, although sometimes it is difficult to know what to give to Killa, as he has difficult tastes. So clothes are one of the best gifts for him. As Dirk Kahlil's birthday coincides with Athena Swarus on the 2nd of March, for next year Athena's birthday will be moved to March 10th so they don't overlap and to have a further excuse to have more birthday parties. Anyhow, all birthday dates are calculated astronomically as best as possible, so they are approximations only. As for mine, I've been moved from March 8th to May 8th so it does not overlap with Sophia's, also following the official birth date I had when I lived on Earth. This year, the birthday parties were a lot larger because we had 100 more guests than usual 30 Teleka crew members because the assistant starship Saska 1 is still here. Her crew members are all full Tegetans, so they have no clue about birthday parties. So they were all very intrigued at what we were doing in them, but fascinated at the excuse for eating new and exotic food which, although delicious, didn't always agree with their stomachs, if you know what I mean. The parties always take place in the Red Piano Room, which is located all the way forward and down in Teleka in the last deck below, in the Bao Keel area. It is a beautiful room with red carpets and sofas and a grand piano at the front, with very large windows that span from the floor to the roof and all around the Red Room, which give the people there a wonderful view of Earth passing below on the port side of the ship and of space and other parked starships to the starboard side. As the anecdote goes, the grand piano, which is a Steinway and Sons from the year 1900, was rescued from destruction by a tractor beam from a collapsing building in London during the World War II German bombing raids back in 1940. At this time, in Teleka, the only person who plays the beautiful old grand piano is little Sophia, who can do so amazingly well. Besides the usual clothing, Dirk Kahlo got some miniature vehicles he wanted for his birthday, as he likes them very much, mostly collectibles from Earth. Athena Swaru got a nice dress, some blouses, and several pieces of homemade jewelry using amethyst stones and other crystals and stones like lapis lazuli. During the first three birthday parties here, two events, little Yaji Sophia Swaru complained that the parties were too serious and way too adult, she said. So when hers came, we filled the place with colorful balloons and let her choose the music too. Be played there, all very noisy as would be expected, as well as her favorite food, including chocolate cake decorated with a single candle in the shape of how many years she turned during her birthday. As I said above, the years and the dates are calculated as best as possible, so I opted not to mention how old Yaji is at first because she has turned out to be the hardest to calculate of all of us. She is supposed to be 12 years old, but after a thorough medical examination and laboratory test senator, our ship's physician, conducted on her, the medical results indicate that she is only nine years old. Yaji is tiny and hasn't grown a millimeter. She also behaves like a nine-year-old, at least most of the time, besides what her medical tests say, as it looks like she only has two speeds, a little innocent child and super cosmic wise ass. I know many of you who have been following my predecessor's work with Robert and Goshia and mine as well will now think this is strange, as Yaji apparently is not growing or maturing, I know. So make of this whatever you want, as we here do not know what to make of it either. Anyhow, Yaji was very happy during her birthday party. She loves to have all the attention on her, and she got a lot of presents, things she wanted very much. She loves human toys, so she got more little Polly Pocket doll accessories and two kits of Legos, which she loves a lot as she can spend hours putting them together and also creating variants of the original, combining all the pieces. This time, she got the Lego 2 motorcycles she chose and wanted, an interesting change from the starships and airplanes she usually prefers to play with. We are aware that one of the reasons Yaji likes Legos so much is because she can station her little body somewhere building the Lego kit while her mind wanders off to higher planes of existence where she likes to astrally dwell. While everyone is at the parties, the two ships which are docked together, Saska-1 and Teleka, continue to function autonomously using their advanced artificial intelligence. It is very good and capable, but we also feel the need to monitor what it is doing closely, so there is always someone at the bridge of the ships, except for the few hours we can all move away for a birthday party. 
The crew members of the Tegedon escort destroyer Vigilant Eagle had to remain at their posts in their ship, watching our backs during the celebrations. At 130 people into Teleka's red room, it was quite full. It is nice to see new faces, although they hardly mingle with the rest of us, and I'm still wondering exactly why. It is as if they had a lot of respect for us who have been a long time here. But they do show a lot of interest in what we do, starting with birthday parties they are not used to seeing. But not only as do they look at us a lot, all of them, as if we were strange creatures. But I feel that Queen Alionum and I are who they are most interested in observing. Perhaps it is only natural, as Alionum is their queen, and as for me, because they know that in the future I will wear Alionum's shoes. As for the ongoing repairs on Teleka, they are slowly moving forward. They are taking a lot of time because the engineers of both Teleka and Saska 1 must perform tasks which are usually done in special service installations in a spaceport on the ground, like the one found in Teleka City, Temur, the city this ship is named after. Four of the twelve engines must have its internal turbine rotors replaced, and such is an operation which has not been performed since the year 2012 in Earth's orbit but it was performed on a much smaller starship of the Eagle class, sister ship of the Vigilant Eagle, which is escorting us here now. Engine rotor turbine replacements have never been performed on such a large starship as Teleka while in space, and they will be done in the next few days, so we are all a bit nervous because of that. This will be all for today. Thank you for watching my video and for liking, sharing, and subscribing for more. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love, your friend, Mari Swaru.